after the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, free to Egypt with the child and his mother. The angel said, stay there until I tell you to return because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother. And they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord has spoken through the prophets. I called my, I called my son out of Egypt. Herod was furious. And when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him, he sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under. Based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance, he wrote Buddha asking for fail what God has spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A cry was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rahel weep for her children, refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. When Hero died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, the angel said. Take the child and his mother and back to the land of Israel because those who were trying to kill him, were trying to kill the child, are dead. So Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. But when he learned that a new ruler of Judah was Herod's son, Achilles, he was afraid to go there. Then, after being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. So the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what the prophet had said. He, he will be called a Nazarene. So we begin with a list of some difficult things in life. Marriage can be difficult. It can also be good. Raising children can be difficult, although it's also good. Having no children can be quite difficult. Being the child growing up, it's almost always difficult, isn't it? Uh, going to school, getting education, getting through, that can be difficult. Working can be a challenge. Not working when you want to be working is also difficult. Getting along with your family can be hard. If you have no family, that's also hard. Making friends, growing old can be difficult. Taking care of people who are growing old can be difficult. Staying healthy or getting sick has its difficulties. Paying the bills. This is just a partial list of things in life that can be difficult. And I think it's safe to say that you could check the box on a lot of these, right? You have faced a lot of difficult things in your life. And you are currently facing a lot of difficult things in your life. Now if you want to make it even more difficult, you could marry someone from a different culture. Because then you have different ideas about raising your children and how to discipline them and education and everything else on that list all of a sudden becomes more difficult and if you're really in the mood and you want to make it even more difficult you can move to another country so then you are raising children with different expectations maybe from your wife but also from the people around you and you have different ideas about how education works and when you grow old you have different expectations of how the elderly are treated, respected and so on and there are a good number of us here who have in fact moved to another country life is difficult enough 
if you choose to marry somebody from another culture, no problem with that, but you just need to know it's going to add a level of difficulty. If you move to another country, you need to know that also adds to the difficulty of life. And you want, uh, well, language, weather, food, culture, transportation, these are some of the things that are more difficult in a place that is not your home. If you want to make it still more difficult, if that's not enough for you, you could be a refugee. So then you are coming from danger, from stress. And you're coming escaping through danger. And then you come here to Belgium and you live at a center. And you apply for papers. And they deny you and then you apply again and then you would do it again and you wait and we ask you questions do you know how long it's going to be? And they said no we have no idea this is the second time I have an interview I'm going to court there is an extreme level of difficulty in being a refugee the place you come from the country you're coming from maybe is being destroyed your home is no longer exists and come to a country seeking refuge, seeking asylum, and it's difficult here too. You also come here and you sometimes face suspicion. People who arrive in a new country, not just Belgium, but throughout Europe and the United States, this is true in, in my country too, face suspicion. People say they're coming to take money, say they're coming to take jobs, or they say they're terrorists. So imagine running from danger, through danger, arriving in a place, not finding work, not finding a home, and finding that people are suspicious. This is a difficult way to live. So there's some different categories. Uh, an expat is somebody who lives and works in another country for a limited time. You come, people, this used to be a, a church made up of a lot of expats. People who came for a few years working for a company and knowing that they're going to return home. That has challenges, but then there are also immigrants, people who choose to move to another country, usually because they're looking for work. They don't have to leave, but they choose to go. And then the third category is a refugee, is somebody who is forced to move to another country to escape danger. Jesus, this is the story, this is what our brother Isaac read for us. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there until I tell you to return because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. That night, left for another country. Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. Jesus was a refugee. He was fleeing violence, along with his parents, Joseph and Mary. He was fleeing from a dictator, somebody using his power only to keep himself in power. And if it meant killing all the boys under two years old in a whole town, he would do it. Unfortunately, this is the kind of thing that is still in the news. People using chemical weapons, nuclear weapons if they can, even on their own people, to keep themselves in power. It still happens today. And he's fleeing from his own people. Herod the ruler was a Jew. And he is seeking to kill Jesus because he's threatened that this young man, this baby who was born, may become the next king. Joseph and Mary were told this promise that their son would save his people. That's the announcement that the angel made. This is the promise. This child is unique. This child will be called the Son of God. But the reality is then they're told to take their son and run away. So between the promise and the fulfillment of the promise, there is this 
reality of suffering and endurance and waiting, maybe doubting. And we find ourselves in that reality, don't we? God has given a promise to save. He's given a promise of eternal life. He's given a promise of His love to us. And you have received the promise with joy. But we are still waiting for it to be fulfilled finally. And we find ourselves in this time suffering, struggling, enduring, being patient, sometimes being impatient. This is the same situation that Jesus and His family found themselves in. Jesus understands and his parents understood what it is like to move to another country, what it is like to flee from danger. They understood what it is like to be not at home in another country where there is a different language and different culture and all these things. Waiting for the danger to pass so that they can return home. Jesus experienced that. Christmas is about the birth of Jesus Christ. Good news. He was born as a human being. God Himself, in the, the Son of God Himself, became a human being. He became poor, as we saw last week. He also became a refugee, fleeing from His home, fleeing from danger. And He suffered as a human being, and as a human being, He died. This is a part of what Christmas is about because this is who Jesus was. Now you notice there's some echoes of the story of God's people from the Old Testament. In this passage, what we read in Matthew, there's some echoes from what happened before. Pharaoh, the uh, king of Egypt, he killed the newborn boys of the Hebrew people, the, the Jewish people. Their newborn boys were killed, but Moses escaped. Also, Herod, the king of, is, of, of a part of Israel, governor of a part of Israel, he killed newborn boys, but Jesus escaped. Abraham and Joseph, they went from the promised land that God had shown them, and they went into Egypt for a time. And also Jesus went from the promised land into Egypt for a time. You see these echoes, and that's not all. Abraham, Joseph, Moses, and all the nation of Israel went from Egypt, which was a land of slavery, into the promised land. God set them free. And also Jesus went from Egypt, the land of slavery, into the promised land. They returned. So these things God had done with His people, Israel and the Old Testament, the individuals and the nation, He is doing again in His Son Jesus. So that, as it's quoted in Matthew chapter 2, what, what the prophet Hosea first said, out of Egypt... I called my son. And when the prophet Hosea, God speaks this to the prophet Hosea, he's talking about the nation of Israel. I called my son, my people, out of Egypt, out of slavery, and I brought them into this promised land. And Matthew says, this is also about Jesus. It's more so about Jesus. Out of Egypt, I called my son. Out of exile, out of captivity, out of being a refugee, I have now brought him home. And I'm bringing my people home. So Jesus is God's faithful son. He is the new Israel. He is a new humanity showing us God's plan for us. That's what we get through Jesus. So, it's been pointed out, this is in a, a commentary that I read. Matthew chapter 1 is like the book of Genesis, but new. 
If you read the, uh, the, the Matthew chapter 1, it's basically a list of who was born to who. A list of sons and fathers and sons all the way down. Generations and another list of generations and another list, which is like Genesis in the creation of the world and the, the, the humanity populating the planet. And it happens again in Matthew chapter 1 when it gets to the birth of Jesus Christ. It's like there's a new creation happening. And chapter 2 is like the new Exodus, the second book of the Bible, where God brings His people out of slavery in Egypt. And so God is doing this again. God is fulfilling what He started through Jesus Christ. So Jesus represents God to us. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. That's who Jesus is. He is God with us. And Jesus also represents humanity. He was born as a human being. He was poor. He was a refugee, he suffered, he died. All of what it means to be a human being, all these difficult things that I listed, Jesus experienced these things too. He knows what it means to be one of us. And as one of us, he brings us to God, represents us before God as he represents God to us. I also want to point out, in the Bible, it says quite a bit about exiles, refugees, and immigrants. Adam and Eve, after their disobedience, were shut out from the garden, from the paradise. And so they lived, and all humanity after lived, in exile, separated from the presence of God. That's how this, this story begins. Abraham was told to leave his father and mother, to leave his homeland and go to the land that God would show him. So Abraham lived as an immigrant, somebody wandering through the earth but not really being at home. Joseph also was sold by his own brothers as a slave and he went into Egypt. And there he lived as an exile. Moses and Israel were then slaves in the country of Egypt. Israel and Judah as nations, Israel being the north, Judah the south, Israel was taken into captivity into Assyria, and later Judah was taken into captivity in Babylon. This is all through the Bible, and it's also in Jesus. So this is a major theme in, throughout the Bible. One of the main things that it talks about is people going out and being brought home. It's about being lost and being found. Being alienated and reconciled. Rejected and accepted. Being dead but being made alive. Being a refugee and being brought home. Throughout the Bible, one of the main themes over and over, it is repeated. And there are uh, many people who, who sense this, who feel this, who have questions. Who am I? Where do I belong? Where do I fit in? There are many people wanting to know what is my place in this world. You feel it even more so when you move from one place to another. You feel, I don't fit in here. It takes time. But it's also possible that even in the place where you were born, you feel like, I just don't fit in. You know the streets, you know the restaurants, you know the language, but what you value is different than what everybody else around you values. And you feel different. 
and you wonder, where do I fit in? Well, Jesus became poor to make us rich, as we saw last week. Jesus was rich, but became poor to make us rich. And Jesus became a homeless refugee living in exile to bring us home. Where do I fit? Where is my home? Where do I belong? Jesus takes you there. And only Jesus takes you there. This is a picture, well this is a map from uh, about 300 years ago in this other part of Europe near Hungary and this place that used to be called Bohemia and Moravia and Moravia is now part of Czechia, is that what it's called, Alka? Czechoslovakia, Czech Republic, now they changed their name to Czechia. Okay? Moravia. There was a man who was a count in Moravia, meaning he was one of the no <laughs> nobility, the upper class. And this man, his name was uh, Count Zinzendorf. He began an experiment where he, he used his inheritance to buy a piece of land. And he said, refugees who were fleeing persecution through, all through Europe, because of their faith, they were being hounded to death sometimes. He said, you can come and live on my piece of land. And people began to come from throughout Europe and live here in Moravia, now part of Czechia. And he, with the, the Moravians as they became called, he created a home for persecuted Christians from around Europe and refugees lived there along with the wealthy and the educated, people like him. He moved there himself. He did not acknowledge distinctions in class or education. He said it made no difference. And there, this experience led to the beginning of a hundred year prayer vigil. Around the clock, for one hundred years, somebody was always awake, always praying. And out of this community, people began to go as missionaries throughout the world. Any time there was an opportunity, people stood up and volunteered, and they went two at a time. Sometimes they packed their belongings in their coffin, knowing they would not return. This kind of experience for them was a, a new and powerful thing. Not just for them, but for all of, all of Europe. They lived there in this home, but I was saying they knew it wasn't their true home. They knew that wasn't their lasting home. They came from one place to another and they found this community, they found this prayer life, they found this missionary zeal. They knew it wasn't their true home. This is written by Zinzendorf himself, a hymn he, he wrote. He said, Jesus, lead us on till our rest is won. And although the way be cheerless, we will follow, calm and fearless. Guide us by your hand to our fatherland. If the way be drear, if the foe be near, let not the faithless let not faithless fears overtake us. Let not faith and hope forsake us, for through many a woe to our home we go. This is a man who also suffered a lot. Out of twelve children that he had, nine died early in their life. This is a man who knew that sometimes life can be dreary and cheerless. And yet with this passion, he said he knew Jesus Christ had become a human being. And as a refugee, as an exile, as somebody who wandered, Jesus brings us home. This is what Jesus means to you and me too. He's brought us here together. And really, what God is doing in this church is pretty unique. There are people who are from this country. There are people who are from other countries. There have been expats. There are immigrants. There are refugees. And all of us would say, this is my home. This is where I belong. All these people have a home at AIPC. Is that not true? Yeah.
So there are people who have said, more than one, people who, people who have told me, the first time I came, I felt at home. I felt accepted, loved. Yeah? All these people. Where else in the world is this true? There are some other places, but really this is pretty unique. And we need to recognize what God has done and what God is doing here. At Christmas, we remember Jesus was born as a human being. He became poor to make us rich. He became a refugee to bring us home. He suffered to give us forgiveness, and He died to give us life. This is it. We feel at home here. I feel at home with you already. You feel at home here, I hope. I only want to remind you, this is not our eternal home yet. Not this country, not this building. Jesus will take us there. That's the reason He came, the reason He suffered, the reason He died. To take us home. Out of the exile from the presence of God, to return to our home with our Heavenly Father. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank You for Your kindness and Your love. We thank you for sending Jesus Christ to your own Son who is willing to suffer and die. And God, we are glad that even Jesus understands the experience of being a refugee, of being an immigrant, of being not at home. And we thank you, Lord, that you bring us home None of us feels truly at home on the earth, no matter where we are or who we are with. There's always this longing for something more. And sometimes, God, we are so full of suffering, we're so full of sadness, we can't wait to be with you. We can't wait for you to bring us home. As long as we are here, give us strength, Give us endurance. And Lord, I pray your blessing on this church that people from Belgium, people from every country, people coming as refugees, as immigrants, expats, that all would find that in this church they are at home. We give you thanks for this, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen.